Welcome all. This is Dr. Mubeen Sayed with one more episode of Long Story Short with Dr. Bean from the FLCCC platform. So we have been continuing with our discussions about methylene blue and photobiomodulation. Today I wanted to talk about how photobiomodulation works to rejuvenate or rehabilitate the mitochondria. And once the mitochondria is performing better, not only it produces more energy, but it actually causes less production of cytokines, resulting in less inflammation. So not only the cell is protected, when the cell has more energy, then the cell will not do apoptosis. Plus, when the cell is releasing less cytokines, then the inflammation will reduce as well. And we also know that in this process, mitochondria start producing nitric oxide, which is also useful to bring in more nutrients and blood supply. So let's start a discussion. It's actually a fascinating discussion. So starting from here, this is flccc.net or covid19criticalcare.com and you can find the protocols and a lot of educational material about long COVID, vaccine injury and many more aspects. This is the study that I'm going to be taking the photobiomodulation part from it. In this study, they have covered methylene blue and photobiomodulation. And what they have done is, this is actually a, an aggregate of the other studies. So I'm going to today discuss the photobiomodulation part of it. I also have this study highlighted with me just to demonstrate to you. And if you would like to see the discussion points that I have, if you would like to see the references, you can actually go into this study and see various references. This is the last page and the second last page of the study where I am discussing the material from. So with this, let's start with my diagrams. So photobiomodulation to protect neurons. Now photobiomodulation was originally known as low-level laser therapy or LLLT. Now it is called or has been renamed as photobiomodulation. Photobiomodulation, photo stands for light, bio is the living cells, modulation is influencing. So the mechanism to influence the cells through light. And in this study, they defined red beam as 400 to 720 nanometer and near infrared as 700 to 1000 nanometer wavelength. And various literature make slight changes to this. An important thing to keep in mind, that a primary target of photobiomodulation is mitochondria. So we are talking about the cell within the cell, and then within the cell we are talking about mitochondria. In this discussion today, you'll see mitochondria will become involved, and we will look inside the mitochondria and things that are happening there. Then we will also see that when things change inside the mitochondria, then there are things that will change outside the mitochondria or as we call it cytoplasm of the cell. And when there will be substances, molecules, enzymes that will become activated in the cytoplasm, then you would see that the nuclear expression of various genes that will change, eventually once again affecting the mitochondria towards a more healthy state. So this is the whole chain of events to keep an eye on. So once again, this diagram's takeaway the primary target of the light therapy is mitochondria. And what is the reason for that? As the study said, the first law of photobiomodulation biology is that something in the living system should be able to absorb the light energy that we are shining on it. So chromophores are enzymes, substances, molecules, which can selectively absorb some lights and then reflect the other. And that is how actually we see color in flowers and in plants in other places. In living animals, the chromophore, the entity that works with light, is mitochondria. So what happens is part of the light that we shine becomes absorbed in the mitochondria and changes the function of mitochondria. It is used. It's not that it's just absorbed. The energy from the light is used to alter the function of mitochondria. So mitochondria becomes the target of the light. And while we moving forward, this is an open mitochondria. Other mitochondria are standing there saying, oh my God, this is open. 
And just keep in mind that mitochondria is like a purse, closed purse, within which there is another purse. And then within that second purse is the mitochondrial matrix or substances and enzymes and fluids and so on. We will be talking about the inner purse and the membrane or the cover of that purse, the surface of that purse and enzymes that are there. And that is an illustration on the right side over here. You can see that if you cut a mitochondria and open it, there is an inner system or and a membrane and then there is an outer membrane. On the inner membrane, these little clusters of proteins are the electron transport chain. That is what we're going to talk about. And also, I'll remind you that even for methylene blue, we talked about the same chain. So electron transport chain is an important target for both the methylene blue and for photobiomodulation. Okay, so continuing. Now we are inside the mitochondria. So we are here on the inner membrane. So if we orient ourselves, this is the outer membrane of the mitochondria, so the outer purse, for example. This is the inner membrane of the mitochondria and on that inner membrane, this is a cluster of proteins and enzymes that are collectively making electron transport chain. So once again, to orient you, in this diagram, this little area is what we are looking at. So what are we looking at over here? I've done this discussion in detail, so I'm not going to go into that detail. And don't mind the part of the diagram that is under my picture, that is just this little part of the membrane. Just a quick review, this part is electron transport chain. Electron transport chain is made up of four proteins, four working machines. What these proteins or enzymes do is that they take electrons, and normally from NADH or FADH2, they take electrons from them, and they move electrons within their own selves. And as they move the electron, they produce energy. That energy is then harvested. And what happens is these electrons are also moved through the electron transport chain. And the function of that is not only to give energy, but to utilize that energy to move hydrogen ions on the outer side from inside the mitochondria that the ions end up or protons end up in the intermembranous space, that is this space. Then this enzyme, ATP synthase, allows these hydrogen ions, which are now in higher concentration outside and want to go back in because of the concentration gradient, as they move back in through this complex, this complex moves, actually physically, mechanically moves, and in that process it produces ATP. This is our life. If this does not happen, we are in trouble. And that is exactly what happens many times when mitochondria is dysfunctioning. So part of it is working, some mitochondria are working, others are not working, and we become sick. Now, the whole outcome of running this chain, electron transport chain, and the ATP synthase is that we produce water, we produce carbon dioxide, and we produce ATP. In addition to this, this is an important point, these complexes can release the electrons that they are playing with. Sometimes those electrons skip. And this may be intentional. We want some of the reactive oxygen species to be produced. So these electrons that emerge from them can give rise to ionic oxygen or reactive oxygen species. And we use them in our cells, for example, to kill bacteria and viruses and so on. But if that percentage of reactive oxygen species production increases, then these little monsters, the reactive oxygen species, attack our own cell and attack lipids in there and attack other proteins in there and start denaturing them and destroying them and the cell can actually end up dying. That is why antioxidants are important. So back here, in this system, how does photobiomodulation help? So imagine we are targeting light at neuronal tissue and there are mechanisms, I've discussed them in the past, that there are the lamps that are available or wraps that are available that can go on your head or that can be trained in front of your head. And there are face masks as well. These are mostly for faces, but there are mechanisms to shine the light on the neuronal tissue. So as the light shines, goes into the cell and goes through the mitochondria, part of that light gets absorbed in the complex four. 
The complex four, when it receives the light energy, it causes nitric oxide to be dissociated from it. So you would say that, hey, where did nitric oxide come in? So complex four is very intimately busy, not only making water and carbon dioxide, but also managing nitric oxide concentrations within the cells and within the environment. Nitric oxide has many mechanisms. We have done a discussion in detail. Over here, just remember this much, that nitric oxide here in this context have two important properties for us. One is vasodilatation to bring in more fluids and nutrition and oxygen to the environment where nitric oxide will be in increased. And secondly, nitric oxide when it is bound to complex 4, it inhibits complex 4's function. So nitric oxide bound nitric oxide. It's a non-covalent bond. Nitric oxide binds to heme and copper sites on complex 4 and when it binds there and it is normally found bind there it can increase in binding which will be a troublesome thing and once it is bound to complex 4 it can inhibit the function of complex 4. So as the photobiomodulation occurs as the light comes in and this complex 4 gets energy what it does is it dissociates there is a photo dissociation of nitric oxide from the complex 4. As soon as the nitric oxide is dissociated, there are two outcomes. One, this nitric oxide that has now separated will diffuse out into the environment and go and dilate the blood vessels and bring in more nutrition and oxygen and wash away more trash and garbage and chemical substances and acids that are being present in the inflamed area. Second, dissociation of nitric oxide from complex 4 disinhibits the complex 4, meaning allows, enables and empowers complex 4 to start functioning more. So as soon as complex 4 functions more, it actually helps produce more proton gradient that causes more ATP synthesis. Similarly, it starts producing more water. It would start consuming more electrons, so reactive oxygen species can reduce. At the same time, there is a tiny burst of reactive oxygen species because more electrons are being processed in complex 4. So there is a complex environment that is created. The important thing in that is more ATP synthesis, nitric oxide diffusion, and a brief burst of reactive oxygen species. So more ATP synthesis is always great. As soon as a cell starts having good amount of energy, the cell would reduce its stress alarms and sometimes the cells that are under stress will go towards apoptosis, they kill themselves. So as soon as the energy production becomes okay, the cell would turn off the apoptotic signals. So we just protected this neuron, this cell, this microglia, whichever cell it is. Secondly, of course, more energy allows a cell to do its functions, including autophagy and protein cycling and making more proteins and so on. So that is also a welcome thing. Thirdly, when the energy levels increase, an AMP level decrease that also causes the cell to produce less inflammatory cytokines, right? So a complete cascade towards health. Now, in addition to that, normally when this chain is running, there are electrons that escape from this chain and about 80% of the 70-80% escape from transport chain complex 3. When these reactive oxygen species or electron chain escape, they work with oxygen to create reactive oxygen species. Those reactive oxygen species, as I said before, they cause inflammation, they cause damage, and they generally destabilize the cell. So now, keep in mind, we're going to now talk about this. This part, this concept is done, nitric oxide production or separation and more ATP synthesis. Now let's go to the next concept, and that is the reactive oxygen species. So now let's focus here for a second. When photobiomodulation occurs, when there is energy, extra energy through light given to complex 4, and remember complex 4 is able to take that light, not every part of the cell can do that. This magic is here. So the light energy is taken, and as more electrons are being processed now, the complex 4 produces a short burst of reactive oxygen species. Now those reactive oxygen species, short brief burst, what that does is that causes the reactive oxygen species to diffuse out of the mitochondria. When they diffuse out, what they do in turn is that 
within the cytoplasm of the mitochondria, there is an enzyme system called nuclear factor cup K beta or kappa B light chains. This enzyme system is related to inflammation and anti-inflammation, meaning inflammatory process use this pathway. So as the reactive oxygen species are produced, they will cause the nuclear factor Kb to become activated. This enzyme then moves in the nucleus. Remember in the beginning I said, will go from mitochondria to cytoplasm to nucleus and then back to mitochondria. So that is a story we are looking at right now. So as the reactive oxygen species jump out to the mitochondria, they activate NFKB. That NFKB goes into the nucleus and there NFKB causes expression of almost 150 genes. And so there are going to be lots of proteins doing a lot of things. But if we can sum them all up, the result of this will become that this nuclear expression of various genes will cause mechanisms to be started that will then help mitochondria to take away the reactive oxygen species. So tiny burst of reactive oxygen species started a reaction from the cell to say, oh my God, we have reactive oxygen species, we need to do something about it. And as soon as those corrective mechanisms are established, this brief burst is gone, but any extra reactive oxygen species are going to become corrected. This is as if somebody comes in and rings your doorbell and runs away. And you go out and whoever is standing out there at that time, you say, hey, you are the one who did this. So that brief burst of reactive oxygen species rang the doorbell that we have inflammation. And then it went away. And while the cell went into a reaction to say, okay, I'm going to fix the inflammation. And as soon as it engaged those mechanisms, the other reactive oxygen species and inflammatory cytokines, they started becoming corrected. That is the magic. So three primary outcomes, nitric oxide dissociation, activation resulting in the activation of complex four more than normal, more energy production, and more corrective behavior of the cell to produce less cytokines and to neutralize reactive oxygen species. So one more part and then we're done. So here I have a mitochondria that is divided into two parts, normal healthy part and the pathological part, just to depict these two states. So in a healthy mitochondria, when you shine light on it, near infrared, and the photobiomodulation occurs off the mitochondria, what happens is that the mitochondrial membrane potential increases. So the charges on mitochondria increase. When that happens, so increase mitochondrial membrane potential and leading to the brief ROS burst causes NFKB activation, causes cytoprotection as the mechanism I discussed. Now the question is, how about pathological state where the mitochondria is already producing tons of reactive oxygen species and inflammatory molecules. Now if you shine the light on it, isn't that going to cause even more reactive oxygen species and create a problem? So that's very interesting. When in a pathological state, you give the photobiomodulation, that causes the potential to increase and instead of ROS increasing, ROS reduces. Why? Because the reactive oxygen species production is a function of the charge level. So in a pathological cell or a cell that has a pathology, the charges have become abnormal. So when you bring them to a state with the light, a standard state, for example, or little above the standard state, then if the cell was already producing more ROS, it will now produce less ROS. And when the less reactive oxygen species are produced, then less NFK beta activation occurs and the whole inflammatory process starts becoming reversed. And finally, an unknown mechanism that has been observed, the results are observed in the studies, but mechanism is not clear. That is, when the photobiomodulation is done on neuronal tissue, then microglia, microglia are small supporting immune system cells of the brain, the microglia transform from inflammatory state, pro-inflammatory state, to anti-inflammatory state, from M1 state to M2 state. They do not know how does this mechanism work, but the result is known that that is neuroprotective. 
So let me just very quickly now give you a view of these last two points. So if you see here, it says, under normal conditions, ROS is generated at low levels by normal mitochondrial metabolism. When photobiomodulation stimulates complex 4, activity in normal cells, mitochondrial membrane potential is increased above normal baseline, resulting in a brief and rather modest increase in ROS production. The short burst ROS is able to activate NFK beta in the cytoplasm. The released NFK beta will be transported from the cytoplasm to nucleus. So I discussed that. Then if you see here, in pathological states, the increased mitochondrial membrane potential mediated by photomodulation is able to lower ROS production. As a result, pro-inflammatory NFK beta activity is lowered and then the rest of the activity. At the same time, this is a third or fourth point I discussed, and that is somehow microglia move from M1 to M2, pro-inflammatory to anti-inflammatory. We are not clear how. So if you see here, the exact mechanism is unclear. So this is the discussion. What is the takeaway? Methylene blue and photobiomodulation is a potent protective of neuronal tissue, and not only protective, I believe with the nitric oxide modulation, with in ATP synthesis, more water synthesis, more oxygen consumption, the local blood supply becomes corrected as well. And that allows the area to start healing because of more nutrition, more oxygen, and taking away of the garbage or the trash and the acids that have accumulated, plus the, the inflammatory molecules that have been accumulated in the area that is inflamed and stressed. So this is a discussion. Have happy holidays and I would see you the next time.